Good morning, guys. It is day four. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, we had probably one of the worst nights I've ever had winter ice camping. At about 2.45, we heard the tarp just blowing like crazy on the roof and some serious wind coming in. I'd put a tarp over because it was raining pretty good when we went to bed. And I went out, took the tarp off so we could get some sleep. And by the time I got in, it was blowing between 60 and 80 miles an hour. And it was, it became like dangerous that we were going to even be able to stay in the tent, that we weren't going to lose the tent. Like the walls were blowing in, stovepipe blew over, and Danielle had to hold that wall, and I had to hold this wall and, and the door with all of our force for over an hour of gusts. It was it was crazy and then like I have the floor screwed into the tent on all four corners and then snow over the rest and if that's if that wind had gotten underneath the tent this thing would have just blown up like a kite or a balloon but it was it was not a fun evening I'm so glad we made it through it and we didn't get hurt and we didn't lose anything uh, at one time when the wind slowed down enough Danielle was able to hold these two walls and I ran out and got the snowmobile and brought it around as a little bit of a wind blocker and was able to tie the sides to the snowmobile and to the Brandon box and then that made it so at that point it probably slowed down to like 40 miles an hour and we were able to get back to sleep for a couple hours but it was I mean I've seen some winds before I fished in 50 mile an hour winds but that was by far the strongest wind I've ever been in, especially in a tent. It was as hard as we could push against that wall. It was blowing that hard. So proper preparation helped, you know, screwing it to the floor and stuff. I wish I'd took even more preparation. We hadn't had a stitch of wind the whole trip, but we made it through. We're very happy this morning. We're grateful. We're hoping that no one else was on the ice in a similar situation, but worse. And we're hoping no one got hurt last night. The temperatures have come up quite a bit. It's got to be in like the mid 40s now or 40 degrees. It's early in the morning. And the lake is slushing out hard. I can see it slushing out as as I sit here. So we're not going to fish today. They were calling for rain this evening when it gets dark. But we do not trust the weathermen one bit. So we're going to have a nice easy morning. Uh, get some of that breakfast and then... We're going to just pack up and take our way easy way out and we're going to return the hitch that I had to borrow from the Allagash Wilderness Waterway to them and then we might do a hike, we might uh, go look at the ice caves, or we might just shoot some b-roll for the cameras and work our way down south. So awesome trip, glad it ended the way it did last night and or this morning and, and wasn't worse than it was. There's Danielle, she's getting packed up. What do you think? Oh, that was exhilarating. <laughs> it was uh, in the moment pretty intense. We were both shaking mm. from adrenaline and... Well, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. And while it was all going on, I had moments where I just like threw on a jacket, threw on my shoes, filled my pockets with like my wallet, a headlamp, GPS my glasses, beacon. in case, I was just thinking of the emergency situation in case it did blow up and I asked Joe what would happen, so we had a plan, so I knew what to do. So that's always, always good to do is establish a, a plan with your, with your person. So, if something were to happen, you guys are on the same level, and there's, you can feel comfortable, and don't let fear or, like, take over in those situations, where you remain calm and just know, okay, if this were to blow off, we just focus on taking care of ourselves, and get on the sled, maybe try to grab what you can that's in arm's reach, but, you know... Joe said, 
in that moment, things can be replaced, gear can be replaced. So we just focus on getting on the snowmobile and back to the truck. So that put me at rest that knowing we did have a route out. Yeah. Well yeah. said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. We were able to get back to sleep and uh, feeling good. Yeah, so we're about seven miles from the truck. It would have been it would have been a good haul with the snowmobile. The trail's just torn right up from all the people going to the trains right now. But we would have made it pretty quick work last night, I promise you that. And yeah, like Daniel said, I mean it was just like if the wind stopped blowing for a second, we would just try to grab something. One of us would, the other would hold the wall and like grab boots. Like I, I ended up getting my socks on finally. And that warmed up a little bit. And then I got a jacket on and I warmed up a little bit because I was getting really cold too from standing there. And it was prolonged. I mean, an hour and 15 minutes we figured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hour and 15 minutes of that, of just intense fear of losing your shelter and, and you know, being in a really, really tough situation. But kudos to Eskimo. I know I'm wearing the brand, but... <laughs> the tent held up. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, and the way they designed it, I don't know if it's to like deflect the wind too, but it did a good job. I'm so glad it didn't like rip apart at the seams. Oh. Yeah. But I didn't secure the, <clears throat> the, the pipe going out and I had it pretty high and very quick into that storm. The pipe took a tumble and luckily we didn't have a fire going or we would have had a lot of smoke in here but i got those gloves there so i could have picked up the whole stove and thrown it outside if we needed to but yeah so securing the pipe if you know you're gonna have any winds um like i said the weatherman called for five to ten miles an hour tops and we were i mean it was between a hurricane and a tornado like we thought it could have been like a microburst that's how hard it came and it actually swirled it started this way and then it came and the hardest was this way so yeah, the cool part was like listening to the wind <laughs> oh yeah it would be like coming from one direction and then we could hear it go all the way down to the end of the lake and then we would like hear it coming the other direction and then yeah yeah it sounded like a space shuttle or a rocket taking off it was so loud i'm sure you could have if you had a decibel meter you could have measured it it was so loud and like the tops of the trees are just poof i can't wait to see how many trees are down on the way out or on the road yeah that's true yeah, yeah that's probably a, another reason we a good reason to start going over yeah. to cut our way out yeah you don't always want to be the first out usually, <laughs> usually the first does all the cutting but we don't mind we like cutting and then the other thing is there's been two what they call microburst tornadoes up here. One was that coffee loss, and some of my hunting buddies would remember that one. And it took down mega, like big trees inside the park, which is only like 15 miles from here, maybe a little more. But there was so, the trees were intertwined so badly and just ripped up from this crazy high winds for just one swath that was like, Maybe maybe 300 yards wide and maybe a quarter mile long or a half mile long. And like a mouse couldn't have survived it. That's how bad the destruction was. That was probably 15 years ago. And then there's another one over by like the Sawabungi Nasada Hunk uh, parallel where they had cut and the trees were kind of weakened because they opened it up. And then a major microburst went through and just ripped everything up. And all the trees are like twisted broken there's like they're not even sheared off and you know straight like, like wind might do they're actually even twisted and there's thousands and thousands of trees on the ground in that one swath so i'm pretty sure that's what we had last night come true was a microburst that lasted an hour and 15 minutes okay guys that's what she looks like all empty quick 15 minutes of packing up and we still got a lot of wind believe it or not so we're gonna try to be pretty quick doing the corners and 
and popping her down and everything. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to set this up and just let it record. You got it. Uh, yeah. I was waiting for you. Uh, All right, well, this thing kind of holds up and rolls. I'm going to roll it right towards you. Oh, cool. Um, and then, thank you if you roll that. Then we just need. Oh, this pot, this isn't out. Uh, nope, that's this. Yep. Yeah. No. We need um, one of those cables. Um, the clutch. This thing. Yep. Okay. And the key to getting this thing in the bag yeah. is to get a wrap around this pretty tight. So I'll I'll hand this down. To you. No. Yeah. Let's go this way. Here, you hold the bag. Okay. And then you're just going to go over it. I do it this way. A lot of people try the other way, but it's harder. We got it pretty far, and then we'll just flip it over. You don't have to come the whole way, because I flip it, unless it's easy. It's pretty easy. Oh, is it? Okay. bag with all the spikes. Yep. They're pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. They don't have to be fancy put in there. I usually just cram them in. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of got like a little suck, I see. And then this rope. Uh, oh, yeah. The string, do you want that? Uh, small? the rope and the bungee cord, I could just throw in the box of my snowmobile. Now we dance them. You want to dance? <laughs>
Oh shit, there are people fishing off of the carrots. Alright, then the next step is just to... Do you usually sweep it or no? Oh yeah, you can, sure. Yep. Yeah, you and I will hold up the tarp while we got this. so the wind doesn't get in it. There you go. Okay. Yeah, let's try it again. Okay. Now me? me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Top left, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, I jammed a stick. Oh. <laughs> I jammed a stick on there, but it didn't go. Really Yeah, beautiful. That'll keep them from falling over now. now I'm gonna I'll pull this one. Uh, anything else in there? No. Nope. We can do the walls now.
anywhere up there. Still got a lot in it, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pick up. How do you feel about that? It's easy. We left a perfect spot for the next person. Yeah. If they don't get slushed out. I don't know if you guys can see, but the lake has taken a severe slush beating. Anywhere you go out there, you're going to be knee high in slush right now or worse. I would not pull a load across it. I know that. So we're going to, the trail's pretty ripped up because it's not groomed or anything and it gets a couple hundred people a day going to the train so we're gonna take it real easy on the way out we're gonna take it easy on these hitches and yeah that's it nice. awesome we'll see you guys when we get to the truck danielle how was your first experience amazing it was rejuvenating cleansing um strengthening did I say nourishing? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Getting out of the woods to service. I just turned on the telephono and you're not gonna believe it. It's just awesome, restores all faith, which I already had anyway, in my fellow man. But the first message is from a guy, Sean. I found your GoPro and I'm gonna click on the message. On the trail headed to Lockdown two days ago, got it turned on and found out who it belongs to. Awesome. Now I gotta see how much he needs, how much money it's gonna take to get it back. <laughs> That's what he said? No. <laughs> no. Cool. Well, I'll shoot him a message back. Thank you, Sean, for finding it. And hopefully... Thanks, Sean Perkle. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we are here. We're going to... Danielle and I just got out of the woods. We're going to try this place we're called... The River Drivers. We're trying to call the River Drivers. What did you say? You drive some food into you? Yeah. We're going to drive a river, a river into us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to drive some food into us at the... At the river drivers. So how cool is that? Pretty nice, actually. Oh, dude, I'm excited. Let's go. Go. Well, we... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now? <laughs> hey, Joe, where are we at? <laughs> Let's go. We're at the River Drivers Restaurant. Are we in Millinocket officially? I'll have to ask. I don't know where we are. We're on Millinocket Lake. That's all that matters. We're at the Katahdin Area Trails. We're at the Katahdin Area Trails. We're going to go to the River Drivers Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Here we is. Okay, guys, we just drove a oh, good 40 minutes north of our exit in the wrong direction because this really nice guy, Sean from New York, found my GoPro on the trail and he got a hold of me. It was the first message we had. Danielle and I just had a tremendous meal at River Drivers restaurant. The food was great. The service was incredible. So we give it like a three star just because that's what people do. Mm, like yeah. with my ice cream shop. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was snow in the parking there lot. There was slush. Slush, yeah. Slush. We don't like slush. But anyway, we're here. We're going to pick up the GoPro from Sean. We brought him some presents. There's somebody that drinks some Blue Moon beer. And what else do we bring? We brought some scallops. Oh, yeah. We brought some sausage and some deer. Some tender lions. Oh, tender lions. <laughs> yeah. As, as just a thank you, because, you know, you can't thank people enough. And it's cool to be thanking someone with New York plates. I love that. <laughs> so we're here. What's up, man? Are you Sean? How are we doing? Great. You mind being on video? Hey, thanks so much for picking that up no problem. and getting a hold of me. This is Danielle. I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we brought you some goodies as a thank you. I know you said not to bring anything, but that's just how we do it in Maine. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. Some meat for the... Oh, sweet. Yeah, those are scallops. Those are probably thawed out and ready to go. Nice. You guys having a good trip? Oh, we've had a blast. We've been here. We got in late Saturday. Yep. I've been riding ever since. Come to Maine a lot? First trip. Nice. Enjoying it? Oh, I love it. Uh, where you guys been going to Maine? Um, we rode to Caribou yesterday. Just been kind of doing a loop. Went up to the trains. That's where yep. we found that. We passed you guys on the trail. Yeah, I figured because we turned around eventually when I got in there and realized it was gone. And yeah, then we saw, we saw it. I'm like, ooh. We covered the trail. I'm like, ooh, hey, that was something. I just pointed to him. I'm like, ooh, because of a GoPro. I'm like, yeah, somebody's be missing that. How far back was it? Uh, not, not very. Like right. It, one of the Y's are yeah. around the corner. Yeah. Yes. So half a mile from an intersection. I jumped off to check the second sled and it must have gone right through like I tucked oh. it in my jacket, but I usually get it inside my bibs. Yeah. So. And you know, it, it's, you know, finding one that's like somebody's going to miss that. Oh, bit. yeah. And then it's like all the footage and all the stuff you have on that. Exactly. It's irreplaceable. We hooked like, it up to my phone last night so we could see yeah. who was on it. And we said, you said your name. So I'm like, well, let's Google him. Oh, right. that's awesome. I was so, wondering how you guys got. On YouTube, he goes, dude, this guy's got all kinds of ice fishing videos <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, he'll be wanting that back. Dude, thank you guys so much. I'm Joe, by the way. This is Danielle. Joe Kent. Nice to Kent? meet you. Kent? Yep. Nice to meet you. You're from New York, too? Nice to meet you. Yep. Where are you guys from in New York? Um, South of Buffalo. About two hours south of Buffalo. He lives in Andover. I live yep. in Bolivar. Oh wow, that's an area I don't think I know at all. Do you know that area? No. I say if no. you if you look up, I own Tall Pines ATV Park. Okay. That's an Andover. Okay. We got like eighty miles of trails and all kinds of stuff. So. Oh nice. Yeah, we do camping and Airbnbs and. Yeah, I'll throw something on the channel for it. Yeah, it, it's we. We stopped at Libby's and we got gas and the one guy's like, oh yeah. And they're like, yeah, well, we're not at home. We're not at work. So <laughs> well, my, my job will start here soon. He goes, well, what do you do? I'm like, we're going to Fort Worth Park. He goes, whereabouts? I'm like, down Andover. He goes, I know where that is. Mm. You do? <laughs> yeah, lady that rides up here. She's always talking about going to your place down in New York, Tall Pines. I'm like, yeah. And he said the lady's name. I'm like, yeah, I know her. Mm, yeah. Small world. Yeah, I'm like, wow. Crazy. Like, these guys. Dude, I can't go. I well, we were in that other restaurant. Those dudes from Syracuse were in there. Yeah, and I talked to them for the uh, Oneida Raceway. Yeah. And I talked to them right before our, our Labor Day party about their drag race setup. And I'm like, oh, yeah, and the guy's like, yeah, I talked to you. I'm like, yeah, I talked to you on the, <laughs> on the computer. He goes, yeah. I, that That's crazy. I helped out. What a small world. Yeah. Yeah, we're glad we found it and got your name and stuff off. Yeah, there. I am too. Thank you so much. Yeah, really appreciate it. I put a post on uh, the Northern Maine Snowmobile thing, yeah. and then I had him share it to the fishing thing so did it did people respond they all liked it and just said you know keep trying different pages and stuff like that so yeah but that was before we knew who you were we just yeah. shared it said we found it on the side of the trail you know that's awesome yeah, yeah a lot of, there was they said over 200 people one day going to the trains yeah, yeah i mean it was neat it was pretty cool to see yeah that lake was a little it's with this morning because we were sleeping on the lake <laughs> this morning the lake was brutal come mm -mm. Yeah, <laughs> it was a slush fest. Hard enough. We had a hard enough time getting him to go across it. 
<laughs> yeah, with the slush and stuff or yeah. the moguls. Yeah, and they're just like, uh-uh. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's not fun. I, we passed a group going today, and and I warned them that it's real bad today. This yeah. out here is nothing but water. We tried to go for a rip, and we got halfway down the lake, and we said, uh-uh, we're coming mm -hmm. back. Yeah. We don't yeah. want to hit it at night coming back. Yeah. Yeah. How long are you guys staying? Till Saturday. Nice. So we're here for a week. It's supposed to firm up a little bit, I think. We're going to yeah, try to get good. in tomorrow. we got 200 miles to go. We'll have 1,000 miles in. Good so. for you guys. Yeah. That's our goal. We've oh. seen moose. We've seen the trains. Awesome. Yeah, we, yeah, we saw six moose so far. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I had to stare down with one. In <laughs> the trail? Get, trying yeah. to get my phone out of my pocket. I'm like, do I put it in reverse? Or what do I do here, you know? But he ended up going up. Two more come out, so I snapped pictures real quick. Whoa. Yeah, it was awesome. That's awesome. You guys probably don't get them by you, or do you? No. They got them starting to come into the Anirondacks now. Yeah. But we're still five hours from there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever heard of Jefferson, New York? Are you anywhere near that? Like Jefferson County? No, just Jefferson. It's like this tiny little town. I think it's western New York, but. I have to look. Yeah. The town we're from is about as big as this place. Oh, really? No. Yeah, for them, yes, our town's even smaller. I'll definitely have to look you guys up yeah, for next time. We have a Dollar General, a bar, a post office, and a K-12 through high school in one building. I mean, it's, <laughs> we have a blinking <laughs> Nice. We have a blinking light? That's it. <laughs> Lucky. That's a, yeah. We don't have that. No. <laughs> Moving up the road, we got a blinking light. <laughs> yeah, that's. Well, awesome guys. I can't thank you enough. Yeah, Seriously. Well, we're glad that we really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, yeah, thanks, Ken. Awesome. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Yeah, thank you. You guys have a good night. Thanks, we will. There's uh there's some good stuff to eat there too. Right, Enjoy it's on us. We really appreciate it, guys. Thanks again. There you have it, guys. That was awesome. Really, really cool stand-up guys. And can't thank him enough for getting this back so you guys get to see the footage. Danielle, how badly? I see up the hill. No, how badly do you want to sled off that roof? Oh, not as much as I want to run up the hill. Do it. How about you run up and back? No. All right, just up. Ready? Okay, okay. Go. I'll race you. Winner gets to drive home. Winner gets to. Can I hit you with a snowball? You can try. I like the challenge. Oh, I got her! I got her in the boot! Oh, Give me a flat point. Achilles heel! Helen of Troy! That's a good hill. You got the runs? I got the runs. Oh, bummer. Huh. Yeah, right? Well, like you said, we've been to Island Falls. Yeah. I think it's pronounced Island. Salmon. Yeah. Island F Alls. Here we go. Thank you for getting those for me. <laughs> no, Winter. you get the. Jacob's cattle beans. Oh yeah, I'll try them. <laughs> no. Wait, cattle beans? Is Who that their poop? what uh, Jacob's cattle beans are? We love the story. New England style. Look, we've heard of buffalo chips. They come out the south end of a northbound buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so cattle beans might be the same thing, but different. <laughs> Let's ride. going to Loogie Lane. Oh yeah, it is. We've got a lot of mucus. Wow. <laughs> no, no joke. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Next time I hawk a Loogie. I've always wanted to name my pet hawk Mike. Loogie. Oh. No, hawk a Loogie. Oh, that's even better. 